The Path to be Built into a Holy Place, Part 7 The Place where the Secret of Union is Revealed Rev. Dr. Holly Namok Lee, United Methodist Church Translator, Mrs. Irene Park Reader, Mr. Jacob Lee This video is made by Rev. Dr. Holly Namok Lee, who is a minister of the United Methodist Church she got a degree of Doctor of Ministry at Claremont Theological Seminary in California. She is an executive director of Menowa Ministry. She carries a healing ministry. She is an author of 40 books and led 1,000 revival services and over 200 seminars for ministers. Now she lives in California with her husband, Reverend Peter Yongtek Lee. She is the fourth daughter of Dr. Sung Bun Yun, former president of Methodist Theological University in Seoul, Korea. For a long time, I have not heard about the final step of building into a holy place. But today, the Lord is going to explain about the most holy place. Until now, we have heard about the fence, the gate, the altar of burnt offerings, the wash basin, the table of the bread of the presence, acacia woods, and the priest, and nothing about the holy of holies. The Holy of Holies is where the Ark of the Covenant and the Ark's cover, the Place of Atonement, are placed. The Atonement cover, a mercy seat, is the Throne of Grace, and this is where the redemption takes place. The High Priest enters the Most Holy Place once a year on the Day of Atonement for purification of the people and receive atonement for their sins. This is the last stage of the Holy Temple. The Lord said, This place is connected to eternity. This is where you receive the redemption and enter into eternity after your earthly life of sins and disconnection from God. Therefore, the prayer at the altar of incense can be considered as the prayer which opens the door to eternity and ponder about how the Bible describes the secret of the union between Christ and the church as that of husband and wife. What do you think is the most important factor for the union of Christ and the church? I think it is love. Without it, no union would be possible. Good answer. For union, there ought to be love and consideration for each other. But there is a setback for my union with the church. That is the issue of sins. If the bride is immoral and unclean, I cannot become one with the bride. Then, what must proceed before the union? Ah, then, the sins ought to be taken care of. And in order for that to happen, forgiveness is necessary. That is the very grace of the atonement cover, a mercy seat. There, you are called sinless and considered righteous and be united with the Lord. Finally, we become whole and united with the Lord as one. But think about it. How deep and prevalent are the sins of human beings? They shake the order of all creations, bring death to the world and betray me while coupled with Satan. How can I forgive them? How can I embrace and love a woman who receives my grace, life, and blessings, but in another man's bosom? It was the same for Hosea and the life of adulterous women in Ezekiel. Israel continuously partnered with the idols. If your husband had an affair, could you love him as before? And if that partner were someone close to you, could you still love your spouse as if nothing ever happened? How could Hosea accept his wife who had three children with other men? How could he love her as if nothing ever happened between them? There is amazing secret hidden here, which is a must for union. In order to become one with a sinner, the righteous ought to forgive. The owner must write off the debt 
and proclaim that the debtor no longer has the debt in order to restore the previous relationship. Likewise, husband and wife can continue to be one in such relationships. The secret of a union of husband and wife also lies on the continuous forgiveness. Only when there is forgiveness and forgetting of the sins, then union and love becomes possible. And you can find the secret at the most holy place. The secret of God's forgiveness towards human beings and the union with them. That secret of love is met at the holy of holies. It is not possible without God's love towards humanity, and the union is not possible unless I am in you and you are in me. Therefore, the ark's cover, the place of atonement, is where God is united with the sinner, and the church is united with Christ under the event of forgiveness. There is the secret of redemption, and this is the very secret which the husband and wife experience as they are united in one. Therefore, the most holy place is where you gain life. This is where the sinner who was destined to die can be united with God. That means the person can enter into life. Where there is forgiveness, there is shalom. And shalom implies the attainment of life. The most holy place shows the epitome of redeeming love, which embraces the unforgivable as the bride. Therefore, you must love God. You must love him with all your heart and mind. The manual of how to love God is contained in the Ark of the Covenant. Keep the Ten Commandments. Eat manna daily. Acknowledge the authority of the leaders. In other words, there are the stone tablets, a jar which keeps manna and Aaron's sprouted staff within the Ark of the Covenant. The road map of how to love God is all included in there. If you love God, you would keep his commandments, you would eat the word daily, and you would acknowledge and respect the authority of the leaders God has ordained. And then finally, you will come to the last stage of your divine house. And there is another important principle you must be aware of as you are being built into a divine house. That is, you must love your neighbor, not just God only. The neighbor is someone who will eventually become one of the members of my body. In order for that person to become a part of the body, you must lead with love. Loving God includes loving your neighbor. Whom God created as yourself. You can love only as much as you love yourself. I do not expect bigger love than that. Just love your neighbor as yourself. How much do you love yourself? Actually, you do not love your body with all your heart. Sometimes you treat it carelessly. Sometimes you overuse it or abuse the body with alcohol and nicotine, even though you know it is bad for you and cause your body to weaken without any exercise. Love your neighbor just that much. I do not expect from you the agape love toward your neighbor because you cannot love your own body with agape love. When the divine house is built in you, you will become the living holy temple and through sanctification, you will bear the fruit of my character my image will be manifested through you, and the word will be incarnated through you. Wherever you go, there will be a church, and you will become my agent who represents me. You become my face, my character, and my word. But Lord, why did you have to build a holy temple in us? There are many visible churches and cathedrals. But is there a special reason to build your holy temple in a sinful body? That is a very good question. There is a profound reason for doing that. I will explain it to you next time when I wrap up the lecture on the holy temple. Lord, thank you.
I appreciate your clarifying explanation about the Holy Temple. It was simple, deep, easy to grasp, and educational. I'm already expecting your next lecture.